The 2023 season is just around the corner, and top five Tennessee is ready for another exciting season. And one of those players to help deliver a lot of big hits and a lot of big plays in the field this year will be Jared Dickey. Jared, what's up, man? Appreciate you taking the time. What's up, Eric? Thank you for having me. How excited are you uh, and your teammates just to get started? Uh, there's you know a lot of talk throughout the summer, about the fall, over here throughout the winter, and now it's finally time. Yeah, I mean, we're really excited. We've been putting in a lot of work at the field. Um, seeing a lot of the guys get extra work, too, that's kind of firing me up. Um, yeah, we're just really ready uh, to get out to Arizona and just compete uh, against those teams because there's obviously going to be some pretty good competition out there. So we're excited to get there and uh, see how we uh, stack up this year. Yeah, there's going to be some really good competition there. It's going to be a really great opening weekend uh, just here and, and now a matter of days, if you will. What's it been like this off season? You know, training with getting Q back. Uh, of course, Tony Vitello just kind of going through your normal progress, having so much success last year, um, and, and then this off season just getting ready to try to duplicate a lot of what you guys did last year, and then ultimately go a little further. Yeah, for sure. So, um, I mean, I think I think last year, I mean, it really set the standard pretty high. So uh, having Q back uh, for the whole year, it's been it's been awesome. We've been getting to work in the weight room. Um, obviously, I mean, that's something really important to all of us. We take uh, our health very seriously and our diets very seriously as well. And uh, obviously, training with Coach V is always going to be super intense, uh, but he's also a guy that is going to have uh, have your back on the field and off the field um, no matter what. So it's been really exciting. And, yeah, like I said earlier, just seeing all the guys getting their work done and doing everything that they can, it's been pretty cool to see. For you in particular, man, uh, it's, it, you, you had that foot injury to where it limited you to only 40 games last season. Come back this fall and you have a little bit of a hand a hand injury. How healthy are you and how excited are you just to uh, stay consistently in that lineup this year? And how, how challenging was that last year for you having to watch? Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to finally get a full year, hopefully, knock on wood. Uh, feeling pretty good right now. But, yeah, no, I mean, it was really difficult. Um having to sit out during that year just simply because it was so much fun being on the field with those guys. Um, I think every single guy in the dugout and on the field had each other's backs and loved each other and wanted the best for one another. So uh, just being on the bench and seeing all the guys succeed, it was really awesome. But obviously I wanted to be out there. So hopefully this year we can stay out there the whole year and just uh, continue to contribute for the team. You know, Jared, for you, you're kind of a Swiss Army knife, right? You can catch a little bit, play some outfield, you can DH, you can pretty much do, you know, whatever Tony and, and his staff ask you to do. How how much fun is that? How much pride do you take in in being able to to do whatever they ask you to do? Yeah, no, it's something I take a lot of pride in, just because you know it, it was a lot of hard work uh, being able to master like all those positions. Um, obviously, the catching thing. I started doing it when Evan started doing it last year. So got, getting to work with him and getting those extra reps. And this year, uh, having Charlie and Cal and Ryan, uh, just working with those guys, it's it's been really fun. I think I think the catching room is a, a lot better than what people are going to expect. And then what about the outfield? Um, you know that that's more that's more home for you than anything else, I guess. Uh, you know, adapting, playing the corner outfield spots, and of course center field as well. Uh, what are the challenges there for you, and what's uh, what, what's a strength that you can bring to that that group of the field? Yeah, I think the ta the challenges that it brings are uh, just simply because I was catching for so long and not really uh, as conditioned to be in the outfield. So uh, just being out there the past few weeks, it's kind of kind of been a little toll, um, but n I mean nothing I can't handle, obviously. And I think you know something that I bring to the table in the outfield is just I get super good reads on the ball. Uh, my depth perception is very, very good. So uh, just being able to see the ball off the bat and, you know, run to the spot. Jared, you're a guy that's notorious for being an aggressive hitter at the plates. Um, you know, a lot of times you're swinging at the first pitch. Has that always been kind of your style? Have you always been super aggressive out there? Is that uh, just sometimes you just see the pitch you want and it's the first one? Yeah, no, it's actually uh, – it's, it's not something that I'm used to um, because in high school um, – you know, I, I batted towards the middle of the order, usually around the four or three. Um, and I, I would always be getting first pitch off speed. So, like, I'm, I'm always hunting the heater and adjusting the off speed pitches. But, you know, being a lead off and, you know, just never know where I'm going to be this year. But I have a feeling that I'm going to be uh, 
I, I, I know I'm just going to be getting a lot of off-speed pitches this year just simply because how aggressive I was um, on the fastball first pitches last year. Um, but, yeah, it's something, it's something I take a lot of pride in. It's just being aggressive in the counts. Jared, you're a guy that can also lead off if, if asked to, you know, hit at the top of the order. Um, what are – uh, what do you like about that? Uh, what do you dislike about that? And could we potentially see you doing that at points in time this year, maybe depending on matchups? Yeah, no, I, th I definitely think it's something that uh, we could see uh, just depending on what Coach V think is best, um, just simply because we've got we've got so many guys with so much potential on the team. Um, but it's, some, it's something that I really take pride in. It's something that I like a lot. Um, it, it's kind of like you're the energy setter for the team. Like if you – if you come up swing at the first pitch and hit a double or hit a single, I mean, you're, you're on base and everybody's kind of fired up and everybody behind you is wanting to get you in. So it kind of sets the tone for the day, um, depending on your first at bat and whenever you come up next. Jared, you kind of mentioned that about how the lineup's so deep and there's so much talent there. But, I mean, you kind of look around the horn here, you're, you're you know, probably sending a first baseman, a second baseman, a shortstop, a third baseman, a catcher, and two outfielders. <laughs> so you're replacing an awful lot. But, again, to your point, you bring back so much. And now, you know, regular everyday playing for Burke and for Moore. And, you know, you get a Huna, you get Denton in here, you get Merritt in here. Um, you had progressions of guys like, um, you know, like, like yourself, of course, like Charlie Taylor and some others. Um, how excited is this bunch? And, and do you think, I mean, that's a silly question. I know you're going to say yes, but how is this bunch capable of trying to replace all that production loss from the lineup, I guess? Yeah, no, I mean, I think, uh, I think we're going to have a really talented squad, obviously. Um, it, they're towards the beginning of the fall and towards the middle of the fall, you know, we were just trying to get in, to know each other and how we mesh with each other on the field and off the field. So I think that was the biggest part that we really had to uh, overcome, uh, per se, uh, is just getting to know each other. But I think I think at the point we're at, we're doing pretty good with it, and uh, just adapting to how each other, like how each of us plays. Um, it's just a completely different thing from last year. Obviously, replacing all those guys. Uh, but yeah, I'm really excited for it. Not every baseball team in America has the luxury of having all Americans each as their weekend starters. Um, you know, Chase Dolander, Chase Burns, Drew Beam, and that entire pitching staff. It's so deep and there's a lot of arms in that bullpen, a lot of new faces like Andrew Lindsay, you're going to see in the back end as well. Um, but when you look at that starting staff, those three guys in particular, you know, how, how much easier is it for you guys just to go out and play? Because typically, you know, they're going to be throwing up, some really, really good numbers, keeping games close throughout. And then does it kind of free you guys up, just allow you to go and be patient and, and just kind of play your game? Yeah, no, it really does. Um, and like you said, it's very rare that you see all three of your weekend starters having the All-American nod. So <laughs> that's been pretty special to see. Um, but, yeah, just going out there and having their backs, like they know that they can throw any pitch at any time. And even if they do, you know, get hit on a little bit, we're going to be there behind them to make the plays. Um, so it's it's really special for them knowing that they have that behind them and them just doing their thing. But at the plate, I mean, it's a completely different game whenever you have guys like that because you can just play your game and have your own approach. Uh, you don't really have to feel pressured at any moment in the game just because you know that your guys on the mound are going to do their job and you know the guys in the lineup are also going to do their job because there's not pressure behind them. Was there, was there ever a moment last year when all those three guys were kind of humming maybe midway through the season or, or whatever, you just kind of sat back, you're like, man, this is this is pretty special. Yeah, I think um, it, w it really wasn't even halfway through the season. I think the moment that I realized um, that Burns was – here, I'll, I'll just give you I'll just give you all three of them. The moment that I realized Burns was going to be a dude is whenever we were playing Texas in Minute Maid. Um, that was probably the, one of the craziest performances I've ever seen by a freshman on the mound, going against the number one team – at the time so that was really impressive that's when i knew that like that guy was going to be good for us and then doe against ole miss <laughs> i mean he i don't think i think he didn't allow a hit for five innings and then yeah. he, he gave up a double but it was it's really impressive to see that and then to be honest with you beam was just consist, consistent the whole year mm -hmm. uh, so yeah it's it's really special playing behind those guys and seeing what all they've done so it's pretty cool all right, a couple of rapid fire uh, questions here, but before we say goodbye, um, who is your best friend on the team? 
Yeah, I'm gonna go with Griffin Merritt on that one. Used to be Ben Joyce, but as we know, he's he's moved on to bigger and better things. Griffin Merritt's only been here a couple of months as well, right? Oh yeah, he has, but uh, he's my roommate, so we get to interact with each other a lot, um, and just like seeing how he plays, he plays very similar to me, so it's it's cool to see. Who is the funniest guy on the team? That's a tough one because. I mean, you got Hunter Ensley and Blake Burke. They're they're their own type of funny. And then there's Aaron Combs that is just a completely different kind of funny. So it's it's a tough it's a tough one between those three. Is one of those guys maybe like super sneaky funny? Like you wouldn't think that they're funny, but what they say is actually hilarious. Yeah, it's Aaron Combs for sure. <laughs> Who is the biggest prankster on the team? That that's a tough one because honestly, there's so many of. Them. I think uh, I think Griffin probably he, you know he he's sneaky with what he does. <laughs> he's really <laughs> sneaky. So, all right. And then uh, who who is the uh, the strongest on the team? You would say? Oh gosh, Ooh, that's a tough question. Because uh, there's yeah, there's a lot of guys that can lift a lot of weight. Colby Back is a sleeper. Um, I mean, I I looked over the other day and he was like split squatting four hundred five or something, and I was like, geez, dude. So I don't say him. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that'll do it. That's the same. But, yeah. hey, Jared, man, appreciate the time. Uh, opening day is just really uh, just right around the corner. It's almost here. And uh, looking forward to seeing you stay healthy. Looking forward to seeing you uh, do a lot of stuff for Tennessee baseball this year. I know the Tennessee fans are as well. Good luck this year. And uh, let's do it again soon, all right? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me.